Hello, everyone. My name is Heather, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about STEM research today. Um, kind of break down the steps for how your students can do STEM research at home. What is STEM research? Uh, most of you will probably think of a very busy lab with lots of highly trained scientists or technicians. Today, with COVID, it's very difficult for students to get hands-on, in-person um, experience in a lab setting. So what one of our goals at Admission Masters is, is to try and bring STEM research into the home so that students can still get this experience. Now, how do we do STEM research? I'm going to break this into five fairly easy steps for us today and go through each one. The first step, background research. I ask them first, what do you want to major in? Uh, they may have multiple majors that they're interested in, but starting with that list is a good place to start. Second of all, I'll ask, is there a particular place where you want to pursue this major? Let's say, let's take that student who's interested in biology. Let's say they're and we would find out what is known about this field. What are the current questions that scientists at What is unknown about this field? Because that is where they can step in and start to try to answer or ask their own questions and propose their own experiments. Next step is to more clearly define a research question. First of all, we really want to make a research question focused. A, a question needs to be specific enough you also need to make sure that it's researchable. How are you going to be able to research your question? How are you going to be A research question needs to be feasible. And part of this is you need to think through all of the steps that you will need to take in order to answer your research question and determine. It also needs to be complex enough and not an obvious question, um, but also not so complicated that it's confusing to the reader. And then lastly, it needs to be relevant. So when a reader is reading your research paper or learning about your project, it needs to be clear to them why they should care about this topic. Why is it important? Step three, which is the experimental design and analysis. What is the best way to answer your research question? There's three different kind of general types of research, um, and they're going to give you very different kinds of data. The first is you need to think through all of your expected results. Exactly how are you going to ask your question? Um, what tools are you going to use? What results do you expect? And then how are you going to analyze those results? Definitively, or at least convincingly, um, demonstrate cause and effect. You need to have the proper controls. You also want to think about bias. There's a, a very a very, it's very easy to introduce bias on accident into your experiment. There are things to consider about ethics and safety. So if you're doing experiments with vertebrates or human patients, human people, uh, there are ethic rules that are in place. Also safety. So if, you know, if you are handling any kind of toxic substances for your experiment or anything like that, there are certain protocols that you have to follow and forms you have to fill out conduct your experiment and your analysis. Things will go wrong in the experimental process. What is important to keep in mind here, instead it's I'm going to keep track uh, of all of your experimental progress and results. Take a lot of notes. Sharing work with the, your work with the public is really a crucial part of the scientific process. One of them, the, the kind of most advantageous uh, output for your research is going to be publishing in a PubMed journal, a journal that is geared towards high school students. A couple of these are the Young Scientist Journal and Journal of Emerging Investigators. What are the other options? Like, what if we don't want to do either of those things? Well, we could enter your experiment into a competition, a science fair, like the Orange County Science and Engineering Fair, for example. And then lastly, if a student wants to publish their research on a personal science blog, that is completely fine also, and a great way to showcase their work. 